this is a video on rebuilding a brake master cylinder a um, couple of recommendations if the car's been sitting idle might make sense to just buy a new one but I'm always up for the challenge this is an original Lockheed uh, brake master cylinder so I'm going to uh, pull it apart um, I'm going to be taking bits of video not continuously so I will stop uh, and uh, shoot a bit more so the first thing to do is take the end thingy off all these springs you basically push this back and there's some sort of ring type thing it's not a, there's no circuit so I think you have to snap it off and I'm sure the rebuild kit has this so let's get this off and then once we've done that we'll uh, take photos of the next part so something I remember someone saying is we've got to basically compress these springs so you can use a tie wrap one on each side tie them up so it exposes uh, the ring at the top so let me go ahead and do that so what I've done is I've put some tie wraps on the springs clamped them up a bit so now I can actually get to this thing and then I need to get a little device to pull that off so let's do that next okay so I was able to pull this out it's a spring loaded thingy uh, still saved it but keep it anyway then this thing comes off at the end then you pull out the springs now what I recommend is you keep the cable tie on there because you've got to reverse and put it all back together so then this thing comes off and then this thing comes off and then so in here there's actually two sew clips this one's the easy one to get to but there's one further down and that one's a bit of a pain but I'm going to show you how to do that okay once you got that sew clip off had a bit of trouble getting that off. I've got all these various circuit pliers. There is a plastic ring that needs to come out. And what people suggest do is drill a very small hole very carefully right through the middle and screw a screw in there and use a screw to screw it in a little bit and uh, pull, it, pull it out because that's the only way it'll come out. So let's do the next step. So what I did, I, I drilled very slightly three holes in there and then I'll just put a thin screw in there and try and pull it out. You want to be careful you don't scratch this uh, surface. So I put in another third one. I'm not going to use a screwdriver to on this end and then just lever off the uh, head of the screw. So it's out put three it broke but I was able to get it out and then then now there should be another flat washer in there which is to come out and behind that is a another circlip which we need to get to and that's quite deep down in the bore of the uh, master cylinder so we'll show you how to get that out I thought it was a washer but it's just a, a seal that went this way and so I uh, used a dental tool to extract it. So once you've extracted that, inside here, deep down in that barrel, is another circlip. So what I did, I was, I went to a uh, hardware store. I bought a five-dollar pair of um, circuit pliers. Actually, ground down the end. I think this is the other pair of pliers, but I'll, I'll go and find them. There were these are the ones actually. If you notice, they uh, ground off the ends, so it can actually go down inside. Sorry, we're taking start that again. It can go inside into the bore. And as I said, it was a five dollar pair of uh, various types of circuit pliers I've ground it off 
I made them thinner and this is how I get to the second circuit. So, got all these very fine dental tools, these were leftover dental tools from somebody and they gave them to me. So, underneath this rubber seal is this steel ring. And then, if there's enough light, there isn't, but I can see it, there is a uh, another circlip down there which needs to come out. So I will pull that out. Okay, it's out. It took me about 20 minutes. It wasn't the easiest thing to do. I got one side out and then I used this dental tool to... Uh, Oops, this dental tool to pry it out is actually a, a real dental tool as opposed to one of those Mickey Mouse ones you get at a dollar stop. It got bent, I was a bit upset by that, but uh, I was able to get it out. Then the next thing is, in theory, this should just pop out. In theory. So, let me... Uh, I can't do it one-handed, so I'm going to switch off the phone. Okay, it's out. As I said, you just pull it out. Once you get that second circlip out, it's out. And all, that, all that's needed to do is um, put on the seals. Now, last time, what I did was I actually separated these two um, to put the seal on, but I'm thinking I can just... Well, yeah, I think I will need to separate it because I don't want to stretch it over this uh, point. But there's a little pin in there and you can actually pull that, push it through. Separate the two halves and then uh, change the seals. And those little things. So, yeah, that's typically what's involved in... Um, Pulling the brake cylinder apart, and obviously you want to check there's no corrosion in that bore. And then also, under here, you take these four uh, bolts off. I will later. There's a there's some seals between the uh, reservoir, two seals between the reservoir and the uh, base. And then, so that's basically it. Um, as I said, I'm going to pull. There's a little pin that I'm going to push out, separate this. The last time I rebuilt one of these was about 20 years ago and uh, a fellow stag owner called Randall Young, he's been a very proponent uh, of anything triumph, triumph related, he actually recommended that I go to Harbour Freight and get a pair of uh, $5 um, snap ring pliers and uh, grind the ends off and that's how you do it. It's, I won't say it's the easiest thing to do but if you're up for a challenge, as I said I rebuilt one 20 years ago and it still lasted so um, I'm gonna put this one together and see how it goes. So I just went on the stag forum and someone says that you don't need to <coughs> separate the two parts. Last time I did there's a little roll pin just here which I pulled out and separated but somebody said that you can actually just use a a grease. I have a, a grease here, a brake grease, and uh, you can stretch the seals over the um, parts of the piston. The only thing I'm not going to change is those those little sort of fine shims, obviously, because I haven't. So I'm not going to be separating it. Uh, another thing you want to be careful: you don't scratch this part of the piston because this seal runs up and down. Well, that can cause a problem but yeah that's a, a second one that I'm doing on the second stag after 20 years so let's see how that uh, works out <laughs>